Hello again YouTube, I've upgraded my Monarch deck, the main one I've been using for the tournaments. So I just thought I'd give you an up to date version of what it looks like. This is the uh, this is the latest Monarch build that I've done and it's got 3 Reborn Tenju in it. It's much more efficient than the last deck I had and it won me 4th place at the Static Tournament. The Spellman Tournament actually. So let's have a look at it. Okay, that's the camera set up. A little better than the last time. This time it's actually working. So this is going to be a full deck review. I'm going to show you everything I've got. Including the uh, side deck which we'll be starting on. Now the side deck revolves around basically try to counter every possible deck that I could get up against so for a start we've got three dark bribes okay um, I don't know if that's the best but it certainly seems to never be used in a side deck against other decks I've never came up against a mirror match, but if I did, then three pulling the rugs for uh, other monarchs. Yeah, they aren't much of a threat right now, but uh, brain golems, just in case someone tries to use a light spawn, as if they're not damaged enough already, that's the last thing they need. And um, if I'm up against a good burn deck, I'll side these in. Which I'll have to do because I'll get pwned if I don't. For pretty much most decks right now, I'm I'm siding these in every other game. I might just add them in, but um, that's too vanity fiend. When they're on the field, they don't special summon anything. Like nothing can be special summoned, so pretty good for pretty much anything really. Zombies, black wings, six samurai. Um, but six samurai seem to be the main threat right now to me. So I've done for my last three side deck cards I've put in these. Three puppet plant. Basically like a change of heart for warrior and spellcaster only. Not going to be limited or forbidden, I don't think, because it requires only two out of the fourteen um types. But it's definitely a quite handy card against six Sams and it helped me beat a few tough opponents. Um, for the Synchro deck, pretty much the same as last time. We've got Mist Worm, uh, Red Dragon Arch. Camera just fell there. Um, Stardust, Colossal Fighter, this is a new addition instead of another Stardust, we've got Power Tool, don't know why the hell I'm adding that in, I just uh, felt like mucking about and also took out Goyo, um, Urbellum, Thought Ruler still, Ancient Fairy Dragon, I think I showed you one of them, um, if I did I'm running two, anyway, it's a new addition as well, Scrap Archfiend, just a good uh, 7 star beat stick, another Ancient Fairy, that's 2, and um, 2 of this Sea Dragon Lord thing, and uh, Iron Chain Dragon, Gaia Knight, and Chimera Tech. Now I've not summoned any of these synchros or chimera tech ever except stardust in one duel so that just shows you why my synchro deck is not upgraded and updated because I rarely use it, it's just there if I well I don't even have mind control in the deck anymore so it's only there really if I can be bothered using my plague spreader so um, we're going to get onto the deck here and we'll start off with spells work our way up to traps and monsters so let me just get them into piles.
Right, that's that organised. The uh, spell pile is about to be shown. Okay, um, this build is the same as last time, I think, roughly. Very low spells, very low amount of traps, and a lot of monsters. So, let's show you the spells now. The uh, first one we're using is a Monster Reborn. It's a, it's a staple card at this point. Nobody's running decks without it, if they're amazing. Uh, I've upgraded this again. I've got two of these in again, two Pot of Avarice. Which I think is working now, because we've got the 10 juice. Uh, one Dark Hole. Kept that in. One Soul Exchange this time. I see a lot of beginner Monarch users use three, and um, yeah, I cut it down to two in my last video. And even with two, if you draw Soul Exchange on its own, you're still pretty much fucked. You know what I mean? Like you're still pretty much unable to do anything because you know it's a dead draw on its own. You need to have another Monarch in your hand or something, but. Just think of every other card in my deck, you know, I, I, they're all much better than pulling a soul exchange on their own. Um, but the main weakness with monarchs is drawing a monarch on their own, in which case you just end up taking massive damage and you lose. Um, but usually if you play right, the deck doesn't, you don't end up relying on a top deck. So Blaze Accelerator and Wildfire, that hasn't changed. It's a, it's a decent combo to pull off, but if you can pull it off then... It's worth it half the time. Okay, traps. The traps have changed in rarity only. I think I don't think the uh, I don't think they've changed at all in any other respect. Uh, and seven trap. So first of all, we've got mirror force. Now the last video was a fake mirror force, but nobody noticed because it was common. Well, now it's metal raider, so. Some people that would moan about that can now shut up. Uh, two bottomlesses. One. Hmm. Two. There we go. We're still in the deck. Phew. Thank goodness. Thought someone had punched it there. Anyway. Two bottomless. Uh, two Phoenix Wing One Blasts, one, two. They're still quite good. Uh, Call the Haunted. I think I did that in as well since last week. I'm now running Call the Haunted. Solemn still, and of course Torrential. The uh, the deck I'm using now has a lot of cards which look difficult to get, but they all most of the cards in here come out as a lesser rarity. And are actually extremely easy to get. You could build my exact deck build with um, about 20 or 30 pounds, probably. Uh, but I don't know about the value of this deck right now as it stands, but I think it's somewhere in the margin of about 200 pounds, maybe, or 100 pounds I've spent on it. I don't know. It's very valuable anyway. So. Let's start off with the monsters I'm using three of each. The first one I'm going to notify you of is Battle Fader. You use three Battle Faders in the Monarch builds nowadays. Um, before you would have used three Soul Exchanges, but basically Battle Faders like Soul Exchange in some sense. It gives you the tribute, except you can attack during your battle phase as well. Um, and also negates their battle phase last turn, so you can end with an open field and still not take damage. The only downside is it can be destroyed sometimes with cards like Regeki Break, but it's easier to negate a soul exchange than it is to negate a Regeki Break. No, it's easier to negate a, a soul exchange than it is to negate a battle fader. And most people leave it on the field because they, they, they don't either want to use a card or something like that or whatever. Uh, three shells, ultimate rare. They are just good in the deck. Uh, three rockets in the in the deck. One, two, three. 
I use these rockets to get my blaze accelerators and they've got 1900 attack so they normally live long enough to stay in the field for a tribute and um, here's my most proud and latest addition which sent me back a couple of pounds but so what it's uh, a playset of Reborn Tenju don't ban them yet uh, these are all ultra ones from a sneak peek promo but that doesn't really affect their value at the moment and they're not limited at all and they're running wild to be quite honest they're, they're doing quite a lot of damage and stuff and uh, they just don't seem to die two cyber dragons um, I've still not upgraded to three because I don't seem to need three and the opportunity with my deck arises only so often even with two in the deck I sometimes feel as if I, I don't, I'm not able to summon it either because I've got a monster on the field or because of another reason like for example they might not have any monsters um, one sand gun it's good for searching out your battle faders if they destroy a monster with a black one card and they've swarmed the field then take a battle fader with your sand gun if they haven't swarmed the field then you could probably take something else like a shell if you were wanting to discard a card for example if you had my phoenix wing down you could destroy him get a shell you know there's lots of combos you can pull off or you could take plague spreader if you wanted to synchro and like I said earlier I don't do a lot of synchro in the deck because it doesn't seem to work but anyway 3 riser bounce a card to the top of the deck slows most decks down incredibly um, if you get to pull off their effect and actually really pisses people off as well I wanted a guy scoop because back when I was running my Monarch deck about 3 formats ago I was using 3 Phoenix Wing Wind Blast uh, 2 back to square ones and 3 risers and I managed to do a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast on it he set a monster and set a spell and his turn and ended and um, that was him going second turn at his end phase I bounced the spell uh, and then I uh, summoned Ryzen and bounced his monster and also activated back to square one or something like that. I don't know, but I done a triple uh, a, t a triple top deck and he folded, <laughs> which is quite funny on the first turn. Um, three guys and uh, a Mobius. It's like MST right now, times two I guess. Uh, Thessalos. Last but not least, Dandelion. So that's my Monarch deck build. It's um, nothing special. Except it's rarity, which I would class as very special. Because I've got the highest rarity of everything. Now, except Pot of Avarice. Or Dandelion. But um, yeah, if you've got Ultimate Pot of Avarice, Ultimate Dandelion. I'm, I'm going to make a Trade Binder video. I'm going to tell you what I need and what I've got. So yeah, thanks guys for watching my Monarch deck updated. Goodbye.